All right, today's little treatment piece is about trying to improve your in-range flexion of your shoulder, especially for those people who have had capsulitis or tinnitus or previous like surgery or repair, maybe even just an impingement syndrome in your shoulder and you've lost some of this range here. Maybe you, you know one shoulder is good, you've got full range, and then the other one you've lost a little bit of range. Now, doing things in the clinic like we do, using mobilization, hands-on stuff really helps. But when you go home, what we do is we send people home with band work to try and replicate what we do in the clinic. So today is all about that, trying to use things like power bands to help be me at home on your shoulder. And I'll show you what I mean. Now, what you'll need is something like a thick power band like that. If you don't have a heavy duty one like that, and that's probably the best, unless you're quite a small person, you might want to go down to maybe an inch wide power band like that. But I'll try and maybe go for as thick as you can because these ones tend to bite in a little too much. And especially if you're a sort of a big person with big shoulders, they might be too skinny. So try and aim for that. And I'm going to show you what I want to do with this one. But if you, know, you only have that, then fine. Aim for this one though. So what you need to do is you've got to think, this band is like my arm doing an AP glide of your humerus. Because when you go up here, what we're trying to do is do an AP glide of your humerus that way. All right, so this band needs to go around something solid. Now this could be at home, you could you know, put it around something if you can. Maybe it's something you rigged up at home. Or if you're in the gym, a rig like this something that's just not going to move okay when you move it's not going to move and that'll give you a safe solid anchor point so when you put your arm through like this if I step forward that band is pulling me backwards in an AP posterior direction which is hopefully going to give me a little bit more stretch and range through the joint which allows me to get my arm up high but the main thing is trying to stretch my tissues up in that range. It's pretty hard sometimes if you've got some stiffness and a catch in there. This usually takes that away a little bit, which is what we do in the clinic. So when you're doing this position, try and keep the band directly behind you, all right, like that. So when you go up, the force is sort of straight behind you. And when you raise your arm up, what will tend to happen is you want to put your arm out over there. We're not aiming for abduction day, we're aiming for flexion. So you've got to try and keep, and if you can hold on to another pole, this usually helps. Try and keep your thumb facing upwards and go as high as you can and as straight as you can through that line. And when you get to the point there, you're thinking that band's trying to pull me backwards. I want you to go with it. So hand goes back in the direction of the band. You go as far as you can and then come down again. And that'd be like one rep. I'd try and aim for a good 10 reps of this. It's quite taxing on the whole body because you've got to try and keep yourself in line. You've got to stabilize through your core and your legs to keep yourself in position because if you start buckling through your core, you're not going to get much effect through your shoulder. And then think about that band really pulling you backwards. Now, if you notice where that band is, it's up on my humerus, okay? It's not on my shoulder. Don't make the mistake of putting it up on your shoulder because that's not going to do anything. You've got to be off onto the humerus because you're trying to glide the humerus back a little bit in the joint, okay? If you're on the actual clavicle, you're not going to glide and do any joint gliding, all right? So don't make a mistake of that. Keep it off there. And when you rise up, you can see now it's sort of almost above my armpit. It's into there, and it's still on my humerus pulling that backwards. And I've just got to almost have a mirror in front of me, keep me in line to go, am I exactly straight through there, keeping my body as straight as I can, really reach back and then come down, as long as there's no pain. Now that's a standing one. It's pretty hard though to do you can see I'm breathing a bit hard. It involves a little bit of effort, but it's so effective. Now, the other way you can do this is in lying down. So let's take a look at that option to see if that helps you as well. All right, so the lying down option. Now, this is a little bit tricky at home sometimes if you can't get your band under something heavy like this. So if you're at home and say it's your bed or your sofa, you're going to have to put it under the leg of that sofa. Now, this is pretty easy because this bed's quite high and I can adjust the height of this, of course. But when you're at home, it's probably going to be a little bit lower. So you may find it's a little bit tricky and you're going to have to shorten this band up and I'll show you how to do that. But the benefits are when you're lying down, you can really work on that flexion component above your head because it's a little bit more passive because you're not fighting gravity so much. It's allowing you to go back a little bit further, which I'll show you. So there's pros out, the corner's just setting it up. So, but. If it's all you've got at home, then this is the way to go. What I would do to make sure you want to shorten that up is 
don't fall in the trap of trying to do two bands, it's just too heavy, you won't get it high enough. So do the single bands, right? But tie it around, do it a couple of times like that. So what tends to happen, when you shake and get it down there, you've actually shortened it up. So it's almost hard to get up to there, which is what you need. So then when you get on here, so I'll be doing my right shoulder with this, you wanna go right to the end of the bed, and then this, you pull up onto your arm. Remember, it's not your shoulder, it's your arm. There it is there, okay? Now this does bite in a little bit, so make sure that you have that fat wide band because the skinny one's gonna bite in. When you go from the flexion, just think like you would be when you're standing up. You're gonna go up here, and you're gonna try and keep that in line as much as you can. That's one of the hard things. And then as you go backwards, that band is like me in the clinic doing an AP glide of that shoulder. So I'm doing an AP glide here, which keeps it nice and centered in the socket. I've just got to try and keep my elbow sort of as straight as I can, reach back and forward and down, I should say. So back and down over there. Try not to arch my ribs, trying to keep that down and reach over there and then come back again for a bit of relief. And there's some sort of my rest period if you like, and you go again, reach, 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 let the band pull you down through the shoulder, you reach that way, so reach forward and then down to the floor, and then come back again, okay? Just repetitions like that. Now that is gonna be really, really helpful to try and sort out that end of range flexion stiffness that you may have. Just be watched so you don't catch any impingement with that. Just be still stay away from any sharp pains, but see if that helps you, because it does replicate what we do as a glide type treatment in the clinic to help people stretch the capsule out and get the range in the shoulder that they need or they've lost to help them do active movement overhead. Hope that helps. See you next time.